Hi there once again and welcome to another Expresso Mechanic tutorial and this is the second and final part in my series on creating catapult planes. In our first tutorial we'd set up some user data that would allow us to control the angle of our catapult and of course our planes. And then under this planes menu here we'd set up some radio buttons which allow us to choose which of the three planes we wish to work with. We'd also created some dynamics for the planes and the ground and the catapult. That had all been set up as well. So we've got a floor that we've set up with a dynamic collider. Our controller here, we've got an Espresso tag here and on the catapult too. So we've got Espresso controlling when, when we switch between our planes. It, it makes the various planes visible and it also switches off their dynamics and switches their dynamics on appropriately. So we've got all of that in place. If we play the animation, we can see that the catapult fires the plane into the air and it flies across the scene and then comes into land. So we've got that far. If we just switch back to my original scene, we can see what we're going to be achieving in this second tutorial. So if we fly our plane now, it does exactly the same as we have already set up as we'd expect and then when it comes into land a flag marks its position and tells us that, the, that it's the glider and that's in the scene to tell us how far the plane has flown. If we then go to the controller here and we select the dart our flag remains where it is it doesn't reset it automatically stays there and we can fly our dart into the air and we'll see where this lands and down it comes and it lands and is marked once again. And then we can repeat that process with the prototype and leave the flags there. If we want to reset our flags, we've got a flags menu here and we've got a reset and we can just click on that and the flags disappear and everything is back to square one. So that's what we're going to be setting up in this second tutorial. So without further ado, let's see if we can make this happen. The first thing I'm going to do is in my controller here, say manage user data and we'll add another group. Drop this into the controls group and rename it flags. Add some data and our data will simply say reset and it will be a Boolean and we just want it as a default value of an open checkbox. We'll hit OK and now we've got our reset in place and ready to go. Moving on from here we need to add some targets to our planes so that we can mark where they land and that's going to be our next board of call. To make life a little bit easier I'm also going to colour the planes so in our basic tab here material we can set to automatic and then change the colours. We'll just switch to a yellow for the glider the dart, a red, somewhere there will do. And finally the prototype, we'll just make that cyan, somewhere there. That'll do nicely. I'll switch to my right hand view, so F3. And now we can see our glider. Bring in a null and call this GT for glider target and drop it into the glider. And initially just send, just zero it out so that it's pretty much centered. We can also zero its angle out. And then we can move this. We wanted to move it directly to this front of the plane there here, just to this corner. So by eye, we'll do it. I'll zoom in a little bit closer. But I mean, you can zoom right in to position this absolutely perfectly if you wish to. But as long as we get it just about there, I think it'll work fine. So somewhere around, if we just move that over a little bit so that it's just on that corner, somewhere there, that will do fine for that. So we've got the glider set up. Let's just switch to the controller again, go back to controls, switch to the dart. I will command drag to copy 
the GT. I don't want the controller, I just want the target. Copy that into there and then call this DT. And again, I'm going to move it into position by eye. So we'll just move it up here. I mean, the planes are not all exactly the same location, but that's OK. And that will do nicely for that. And then finally, the prototype. Let's just get the controller once again, switch to there. Copy this into the prototype PT. And then we'll set this up. Just drop that into this corner here. And that'll do nicely. OK, great. So we've got our targets set up in our planes. We'll just switch back to our 3D view, so F1. And we're ready to go. So the next step for us is to build the flags. I'll bring in a cylinder. Its radius I'll make 10 and its height 1000. Hit O so that I can see my object. Just zoom out a little bit. Just place this up here for now. The next thing to do is bring in a polygon. I want it to be a triangle plus X for its orientation, its width 300 and the same with its height. And we can bring that up here and there we go. And that's all we need to do to make the actual flag is just bring that into the great position. In fact, what I'll do be easier just to put it in, the, in here and just zero it out. Let's do that. And then we can position it appropriately. Just bring it up to the top and place it somewhere around there. OK, that's good. So that's our first flag created. OK, to finish it off, we just need to bring in a text spline. And as before, I'll drop this into the cylinder and zero out. Two hundred for the height is absolutely fine. Again, I do want the alignment to be left so we can leave that where it is. And I can just type glider in there. Let's just get that sorted out so that it's correct. That's good. And then this can be in the ZY plane and placed just above the actual flag. I'm going to change the font. You can use whatever font you like. I'm just going to use Lemon Milk Pro if I just find that, which is up here somewhere. Let's have a look. OK, our Lemon Milk Pro. That's what I want it to be. And I want to hold down my command key and drop this into an extrude. But my extrude, I just want to be zero so that it's flat. That's all I need there. And then as per usual, basic tab and change the color and I'll make it a yellow for the glider. The polygon for the flag, I'm just going to make green. So let's take these down, something like that. That will do nicely. And I think I made the, uh, the actual cylinder for the flagpole. I think I just made that brown. So let's just make it a brown sort of color. Let's go here somewhere. Let's bring that down somewhere. Somewhere there, I would think would be OK for that. That's OK. Great. So I've got my first flag all set up and ready to go. The next thing to do is to drop all of these elements into a null. If I bring a null in and drop it into the cylinder, once again, zero it out. And then I can put it minus, it wants to be minus 500. And that puts it at the bottom of the flagpole, which is where it needs to be. And then we can place this up here, call it G flag. And place all of these elements into it. And that gives us our first flag. The next thing to do actually is to group that. So just option G to group and that gives us the whole thing grouped into here. And we can just simply call this flags because we're going to put all of our flags into a single null. 
command drag to copy not with flags selected and do the same thing again call this d flag p flag and then we can work with these we just need to change our text to dart we need to change our text in here to prototype so that's done we can then change the colors of these so our extrude of a dart basic tab and change it to a red that will do fine I think for that doesn't don't need to worry too much don't need to be too particular about it and the same thing down here for the prototype change this to a cyan and we're there that should do okay for that so they're now set up as they need to be and they're all ready to go so that's fantastic we've got it all worked out and we're ready to work on the espresso we'll just close our flags up I think and just drop these down here for now open them up again and then we can place our espresso tag on the planes rotation so we'll go into our tags bring in the espresso tag and we're ready to start thinking about what we're going to be bringing into here well the first things we need to bring in will be our gliders targets so we'll select our first target here and then command select or control select if you're on a PC the darts target command select this one and drag these in now what do we need to give them so at the output stage we want global position Y and we also want just straight global position and it'll be the same for all three of them so we'll get those set up And lastly, this one, let's just get this in there, global position Y and global position. So we're set up so far and that's all good. The next thing we need to bring in, just make that 100%. The next thing we need to bring in will be our flags themselves. So we'll bring those in. Just bring their nulls in so where are we let's just close that one up close that one up we just need these three so we'll bring those into here and these just need object ports at the output stage and they're now ready to go moving on from here we need two conditions initially so we'll bring those two in we've got our first and we need to add another input and we need to just command drag to copy okay so we're ready to start thinking about what we're going to plumb into where well our position wise can go in the top condition here so we'll plug these in like this so they're all set up and then the global positions we can plumb into here here and here and that completes our first two conditions moving on from here we need to work out what we're going to use to switch these conditions and for that we need the controller so we'll bring that in and we need to say plane which is going to be used to switch these so they're there it will also be used elsewhere but not just yet and we'll also while we're here bring in the reset for the flags because we will need to use that a little bit later So we've got so far 
and we're doing OK. We need another condition, actually. So we'll command drag this one. And this condition will be used to switch our flags. So we'll plumb these in. Glide a fl flag in our first input. Now, before we do that, we have to change the type to object. So let's just do that. In fact, it will be a link. And then we can plumb these in accordingly. And that will allow us to pass those through that condition. So those are sorted out and ready to go. And once again, we can plumb the output from our plane or our plane output from the controller, I should say, perhaps into the switch there. So far, so good. The next thing we're going to need to bring in, which we're going to be using shortly, will be a time node. So we'll bring one of those in. As per usual, I'll remove the time port add a frame port and we can place this up here. The next thing I'm going to bring in will be the Python node. So let's just bring that one in. And then we can think about what we're going to do here. The first thing to do is actually initialize this and get its ports sorted out. So we'll remove port number one because we only want one port with a real value. If we look at the port info on that, we can see that that's got a real value. So we'll leave port two in. And then we'll bring in some new ones. And we want two integers. So we'll place input one up there and just double check and make sure that that's the correct. So that is, it's got the integer in it. So that's good. And then we'll bring in another integer at port three. And finally, port four needs to be a bool. So our first input here, we will rename frame. And not surprisingly, the output or the frame output from the time node, we're going to plumb into the frame input of the Python node. So that gets our first input sorted out. Our second input here, we will rename pos underscore y. And that's why we need it to be a real value, because we're going to be taking the position y of the given plane target from this condition and plumbing that into there. Our third input we'll call plane. And from our controller, we'll take the plane output and plumb that into here. And then finally, we can rename this one flag check. And the reset here will plumb into there. OK, so our inputs are now completely set up and we can worry about what we're going to be doing at the output stage. As before, we don't actually need this real value here, so we can remove this port. We'll delete that one. And we'll add two integers. And we have those now we can rename them. The first one we will rename switch. And the second. Uh, it will be flag. Viz for flag visibility. OK, so we've got our Python node completely set up and we're ready to start coding. So I suggest that we switch to a scripting layout, reselect this, and open our Python node in the Python editor. Just move this over here so that we can see what we're doing. And we can start working from here. So we'll remove this line of code for a start. And then we can think about what we're going to add. So in our global variables, we can add trigger. flag underscore viz and finally flag and that's as much as we need in there and we'll look at these as we get there flag viz is obviously relating to this and of course switch relates to this but the other two we can take a look at as we need to moving on from here then we can say if frame 
is equal to zero. So whatever's coming into here from the time node, if, we're, if we've got zero in there, we can think about initializing a couple of variables or a couple of lists actually. The first one will be flag and that will be an empty list and trigger also that will be an empty list. So that's those two taken care of at the start of the animation. That's the first thing we can do. We can then say else. So in other words, at all other times, we're looking at what we're doing here. So else, we can then start looking at the position Y of our target from our plane. So if pos underscore Y is less than, and I'm going to say 0 0.1 as a starting point, we'll, we'll use that from, from there. It should work. If it doesn't, we can always change it. But we'll say if it's less than 0 0.1, if len trigger is less than one trigger dot append one and we can also say flag dot append and this time it will be plain you need to spell append correctly brackets plane. So whatever value is coming into here from our plane output of our controller, and that will either be 0, 1 or 2, that's going to be appended into our flag. And that's so that we can match the appropriate flag with the correct plane. OK, so that's that little part of this setup. Moving on from here, we can go back to this level, so the level of this else. And we can say if trigger is equal to one. So in other words, if we've been triggered, switch is equal to, and we can say trigger brackets zero. So whatever's in the trigger, and that's going to be one, of course, we, we said that we'd append it with one. We can say that our, tri our switch is equal to that. I mean, we could technically just say switch is equal to one. It would be fine. Uh, in fact, you know, let's do that. Let's just say switch is equal to one. Else, switch is equal to, spell it correctly, is equal to zero. That's what we can say in there. And then the last piece of code that we need to actually get all this to hang together is, is quite an important piece because this is the, the piece of code that actually switches the visibility of our flags. So we can say if len flag is equal to one. So if our plane has actually hit the ground and we've got something in flag, we can say if flag underscore check is not so exclamation mark equals to one so if our, if our flag check here which is this bool value that's coming out of the reset if that's not equal to one so in other words if it's zero and we haven't actually reset the flags then we can look at what we're going to do next we can then say if plane is equal to and it will be flag square brackets zero if you can hear the rain I'm really sorry it's just started throwing it down with rain <laughs> but anyway we can then say flag underscore viz is equal to one so in other words if our plane has landed we want our flag's visibility to be switched on. OK, that's what we're doing. We can now put an else condition at this level here. So if we put else, we can say flag viz 
is equal to zero. And then at this level, we can put another else condition and say the same thing. So if our flag check is equal to one, so in other words, if we've elected to reset the flags and we've gone into our reset menu and check the box, then we will be getting a one. That means we do want to reset our flags. So here we'll set our flag visibility to, to zero. And at this level here, what we're saying is if the plane hasn't landed, this condition won't be satisfied and we'll jump to this else. And at all other times, we want our flag visibility to be zero. So when the, the plane is in the air flying or when the plane is just parked on the catapult, we don't want the flag's visibility to be switched on. So that's what we're doing there. And that covers all of our scenarios. OK, that's great. So that's all done and all ready to go. And that's as much code as we actually need. Before we move on, I did mention in the previous tutorial that uh, this would be an example of a try accept situation. But having looked at the code, I realized I didn't actually need it. So uh, we won't be looking at that on this occasion. But there probably will be a situation arise at some point in the future where we will do so. So all is not lost, I'm sure. But anyway, moving on from here, we need to add some more Espresso nodes. So let's just open things up here and start thinking about what we need to do. For a start, we'll bring in a freeze node. We haven't used one of those for a while. Bring that in there. And what are we going to do here? Well, the freeze node, we're going to actually feed the global position value of the current plane target. So we're going to take the output from this condition and feed this into the value. And at the point at which the plane actually hits the ground, we're going to be using this switch to trigger the freeze node and actually grab a hold of whatever global position is coming out of here and keep that value and just freeze it in time. So that's what we're going to be doing there. Moving on from here, we'll bring in another condition. It only needs to have two inputs. And again, the switch will be used on this occasion for this particular condition. And this will either be a zero at the input stage here. And in fact, what it will actually be is zero, 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 because we need to change its data type to a vector because our freeze node is going to be passing a vector two, so we need to change its uh, data type to vector, because of course that's what a global position is, it is a vector. So we'll pass that through the freeze node and we'll pass it to here. So as soon as we've switched, we're going to be using our frozen vector value from here. So that's the first piece of this set up and that's that's all we're going to be using the switch for we don't need to use it for anything else now the flag visibility the first thing we need here is to bring in a knot so we'll bring one of those in and we'll plumb the flag visibility into there so that's ready to go and then we need a second condition and this one is going to be controlled by this reset here. So we're going to bring this over to the switch. Plumb that in there. And then we can think about what we're going to do next. Now, this condition is going to be dealing with objects. So again, we need to change its data type to link. So in here. We'll come down to link and we'll choose one of those. And that's set up and ready to go. And what needs to come into here? Well, basically, we need to plumb the output of this condition into here. But we also need to do a couple of things beneath it. We need to bring in an iteration. So we're going to bring one of those in. 
and this will need an n value of two and we'll also bring in a link list plumb the iteration output into the index input and then we can populate this link list and we need to populate this with our flags they need to be in there and then we can plumb the output of the of the link list here into here and that's our second condition set up and ready to go because what we're going to do here when we are back at or when we've actually triggered this reset we're going to send each flag through this condition in sequence and then when we finally do our well when we when we get our final node in i suppose i should say and finish this off completely you'll see why let's just hit h so that i can see everything again that's better so to finish off i just need to bring in one of our flags and we'll bring in the g flag we need to give it a global position input we also need to give it an object port and finally we need to give it viewport visibility so in basic properties here viewport visibility so we've got all of those in now the viewport visibility I'm going to place at the top because that's going to be controlled by this knot so that will be plumbed into there for some reason we've got uh, well I know why it's because well do I know why I'll find out anyway there's probably an error in the Python I'll find out in a minute don't worry too much about that right now we then need to plumb in the output of this node into our object port that needs to go in there and then finally the output of this condition needs to be plumbed into the global position there in fact we'll put that at the top just to tidy things up okay so we're where we need to be and we've got everything plumbed in correctly and we can see our whole expression now there's an error somewhere we'll check to see what that is it may be something in the python node let's have a look and see if we can find it let's have a quick look at the code uh yeah that's okay up there is this something ah i see look where the cursor is just need a double equals in there let's just do that yeah that's what it was so i needed a double equals there so everything appears to be okay let's see then if we do a test if things work let's just shut this down go back into our standard layout and just see if anything's doing anything we've still got visibility at the moment so i'm not sure that things are correct um let's have a look so if we well let's do a reset go into the controller and flag reset right that's switched everything off okay yeah that seems to be that it is all right let's just zoom out uh, and see if we can set things up the way they were something like that i think is how we had it before right let's play the timeline up goes our plane right so we didn't get a flag well we did get a flag but we got it over here so we didn't quite get it in the right spot now why is that something's not quite right in our python i think let's have a quick look see what we've got let's open this up again and we'll see if we've got everything all right in there there's bound to be something wrong i mean it wouldn't be an espresso mechanic tutorial if every everything ran smoothly <laughs> let's have a look though let's see what's going on let's have a look right that's okay right flames are not equal yeah looks as if everything is okay in there switch 
true to is equal to one. Oh, I see. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. It should be if len trigger. That wasn't correct. So let's just see if that makes a difference now. If we rewind and play. Well, we're still not getting it in the right place. It is switching on, but it's not in the right place. I don't quite know why that is. I just need to look a little bit deeper and see if I can find out. Let's just open the expression and we'll double check this. So we've got Python. That we know that that's OK. Let's check this. So freeze. We've got a vector coming out of there because it's the position that's wrong. That's the only thing It's this. This chain here is the thing that's got something wrong in it. This condition is a vector two, and that's passing a global position. So those two and that should be correct. Let's go a bit further back. So it's, it's coming from this condition. So yes, this is the one that's passing the global position. So what's this got in it? Ah, well, there's one problem. That should be a vector. Let's see what we get now. Should we just run this, see if anything different happens. Let's just select the flag because this is the flag that's associated with the glider. So we should see something happen. Right, well, we've seen that flag move and it has switched on and it's moved over to here. So it's trying to move. That's really bizarre. So it's passing its global position to a vector here, to a vector through this freeze, to another vector through this condition and then to here. So that chain is actually correct. There's nothing else that can be done with it because, you know, there's no checkboxes. There's no local or global checkbox. It's just a vector. Same with this and the same with this. So, no, there's there's nothing that can really be that can really be altered there. They just need to be literally chained together, which they are. OK, then last thing to do, let's bring in a result node. Not a remark, a result. Let's just get rid of that one. Let's bring in a result node. And we'll plumb this into here. That needs to also be a vector because a real value is not what it's receiving. So it's receiving that vector. OK, let's let's have another go. Let's go back to zero play this again and see if that makes a difference yes and now the flag is in its correct position so let's go into the controller here and just do another test select the dart the flag stays there that's what we want it to do go back to the beginning play let's see what happens with the dart And the darts flag appears. That's good. Let's just test the prototype. We might as well see what happens here. Yeah, and they're all appearing now. So that's all working. And if we click back to, to the beginning, the prototype's flag resets itself as it should. And if we click reset, they reset too. So yes, it's working, but you must plumb this result node in. This is an anomaly with Expresso. It's another one of those strange anomalies that you sometimes get. I don't quite know why that's the case, but it is. I don't know whether this switch is, is the problem, whether it, whether this is doing two things at once and whether there's a synchronization error there. There could possibly be. It's possible that that's what's happened there. But uh, yeah, maybe that is what's happened. I don't know. Yeah, it could be. I mean, what we could do, in fact, is test that. If we go into the code, what can we do? I might be able to bring in. I've got a OK, if I just go into here and bring in another integer, we'll call this one. Condition switch or something. Let's just uh, just rename the port. Call this cond underscore switch. OK, and then what we'll do where we've got 
this switch here, if we say cond switch equals one, and we do the same with this one, and then we must define it up here, so cond switch, and that's all defined. I wonder if that will make a difference. It may. Uh, let's just see what happens. It needs to be zero there. So con switch equals zero, con switch equals one. Let's see what happens now and see if that works. Let's just unplug this with them separated out and see if they, that makes a difference. Just bring that up there. Play this and see what happens. No, it hasn't made any difference. That's still in the wrong place. So I don't know. I don't know. That's a really weird one. But it was worth giving that a try. Oh, hang on. It would help if I actually plumbed it in, though, wouldn't it? Plumb that in there and see what happens. Let's see. No, it still doesn't work. OK, well, it was worth a go. But no, it seems to me that you've got to plumb this into here. You've got to, I think, for that to work. Really weird. Just one of those strange espresso anomalies that you sometimes get. But not much we can really do about it. But yeah, all works fine. So there you have it. The expression is correct, but there's something, again, there's, there's a bit of a glitch in espresso. And uh, it, it's causing a little bit of a problem here. So even when we set up two separate switches, it still didn't work properly. Yeah, interesting. But anyway, that is how you go about setting up the flags that mark the positions of the planes when they land. So it's, it's really not a particularly complex expression. It's mostly conditions. I mean, we've got five different conditions in there. But essentially, the controller is allowing us to choose which of the plane's targets is passed through both of these conditions, because we're obviously we're interested in the position Y and the global positions of them. So they're passed through these two conditions. And then we're checking via the Python code whether or not the plane has landed, because, of course, if it has, then we need the appropriate flag to be made visible from that moment onwards. And that's what we're doing here because, well, everything is based upon this, really. Um, but also we're triggering the switch, which is allowing us to trigger the freeze node here and take the current value of the global position of whichever target we're actually interested in, keeping that in the freeze node and then passing it over to here so that it ends up being the global position of the flag. Down here, we're selecting the appropriate flag that matches up with the glider or the dart or the prototype here. So that's all we're doing with this particular condition. And then if we're using the reset, we're switching the condition here so that we can pass all three of the flags simultaneously to this object port here. And of course, we've got the flags visibility, which will be set to off. And that will allow us to switch all of the flags off if we've reset them. And that's what we're doing. It's really very simple stuff actually. Uh, and of course, we use the time node to get our frames. And that's, you know, that's all we're really doing. We're only doing that because we want to check when we're at frame zero so that we can actually initialize our flag and trigger this. That's all we're using the frame for. But yeah, I mean, it's a really simple setup, but uh, a fair few nodes. But as I say, a lot of repetition, a lot of conditions. But anyway, that's how you go about doing it. And it brings us to the end of this short series. So as always, I really hope you've enjoyed doing this one as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. It's been quite fun. And if you have enjoyed the video, then please, as always, give it a like. And if you haven't already, then please subscribe to the channel, leave a comment and, of course, ring the bell. And wherever you happen to be on social media, please, please do share this video because all this good stuff really does help keep the channel moving in the right direction. But anyway, that just about brings the curtain down on this one. So I'll see you very soon on the next tutorial.